First Hardcore Show, UK subs, Young and the Useless, CBGBs. Didn't know what I was getting into. Saw a pit happening. I jumped in that pit, started slam dancing. So excited that people, I didn't think they people slam danced. Slam dance was just something you heard. You know, there was, I don't know if you've ever heard of Quincy. You, you, you remember the TV show Quincy, but there was a famous TV show about, a, who was in that? Um, the guy Jack from the, Klugman. Jack Klugman from The Odd Couple. <laughs> and Quincy was some type of cop. I can't remember what it was, but there was a famous um, punk slam dancing scene and one of the kids dies in it and say slam dancing causes death. So I never thought slam dancing even was real. And then when I went to CBGB's and they were slam dancing, I was so excited. And I never knew, even knew what hardcore was. And I had a long trench coat on and I had a long devil lock hair. And I ran and I just started slamming it to everybody. That was my first hardcore show. And immediately, because I was slamming wrong, John Watson grabbed me by the shirt, put by his hands, was about to punch all my teeth out. And I just went, looked at him and said, I'm sorry, I'm new to this. <laughs>I loved CBGB's, but I was kicked out of there, and uh, I have a lot of like violent memories there too. So I miss it, and I don't miss it. Um, and then A7 was a, f a cool yet also scary club. I don't miss any of them really. I, I mean, they were great, but I, I, they were great then. I, I can't imagine myself wanting to be at that club now as an adult then. Like if I was a 50-year-old man going into CBGB's in 1982 or 83, I wouldn't do that because you never know what's going to happen. But CBGB's was great. I only went to a, a play to A7 only twice, once with Violent Children, once with Reflection Pain. But it was such a cool, weird place. Those were my favorite. And then when me and Ray Bees did those shows at Pyramid, that, those were actually very fun. And that was like, a, like sort of like a mini... Yeah, and it was sort of our club. Like, we rented it out. So me and Ray had the full... We had full thing of the club. It was like having our own club in New York City, actually. That was great. We did Pyramid Matinees on Saturday. That was at the time that I got kicked out of... I got, there was a period of time where I got kicked out of CBGB's for inciting a riot or something stupid like that. How does Ray Capo get kicked out of CBGB's? I, they, could, I could see, like, you know, one of these, like, people under the pit with a hammer or something, but how does Ray Capo... Well, you know why, how Ray Capo got picked up? Because... And, and I get it, in retrospect, there's liability. Someone breaks their neck slam dancing. So they said, no slam dancing. And of course, me, like, this is bullshit. We should all be able to slam dance. <laughs> and so, of course, everyone starts slam dancing, and I get 86 from the club. Man, I, I, I mean, I got to play with these bands I love. That was like a dream to get to play with Negative Approach or get to, you know, or get to play with Seven Seconds. It was like a dream come true. I'd probably say that the first time on the Trust Tour when Seven Seconds played. Well, I'm not aware of the presence, so I'm sure there's some wonderful people out there, but John Watson was always my favorite. They somehow incorporated, like, he, you know, you'd, it's even like the way he punched me or was going to punch me was almost part of the dance. They, they, Carl Mosh was also expert at like this. Sometimes if you were not, if you were hanging on, if you were like some outsider and, you know, an outsider would get on the stage and be like, uh, 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 like that. Carl Mosh would turn that into a, a, a beautiful, he would get up on stage and just give you a, a pleasant boot right off the stage. It was part of the dance that was teaching you how to dance. That was the beauty of John Watson and Carl Mosh. And those guys were artists. They were fine artists. <laughs> like they should be in some dancing hall of fame. I blew the, sh I blew, it's, it wasn't the show. It was the day. It was the day. See what happened was at a certain point in my life, I was always going to New York hardcore shows because that's all I knew. And then when, then when I realized that there is a scene in Connecticut and I helped be one of those first bands in Connecticut when Connecticut had its uprise because all the bands after they'd play in New York on the off nights or off days they'd come to Connecticut so we'd get Negative Approach or Circle Jerks or Void or stuff like that. So there was one time I wanted to support the scene in Connecticut but the next day in New York was, oh man, it was SSD and DYS at Rock Hotel while Jerry's Kids Jerry's kids and FUs or something like we're next. It was like all Boston day. It would have been a great day to be in New York, and I just chose not to be that day. 
No. No. I will say our entire posse was very funny. It was just like one like practical <laughs> practical joke after another. I think between like the guys in Youth of Today at the time, Richie and Purcell and Walter, they were just all funny. Everything was sort of funny and we could pl play off each other to make things even funnier. <laughs> and we were always like, we were really into practical jokes on people. Bands that I can say that I practically robbed them of their style of music, you know, was uh, Abused, Urban Waste, Antidote, Negative Approach, uh, SSD Control, The Crucifix. Yeah, I'm a plagiarizer. <laughs> Stole all their shit. <laughs> Whatever you do, has a ripple effect. Whatever you do has a ripple effect. You do something good in this world, it'll have a ripple effect. You do something negative in this world, it has a ripple effect. You do something to harm yourself, it has a ripple effect. Because there are people that look up to you and love you. And if you do something that's good for yourself, that has a ripple effect. When we put out a positive energy, it actually changes the world. And that comes from, not even like from preaching, or speaking, but actually from being. And when you be that, that's when it has a, that's when it has a very powerful effect. That's the most effective way of like change, is you sort of make a commitment to, to want to ha have a personal change in your life. That's a message for myself, not just the youth, it's a message for adults, that's, that's the message.